Cortland Simmons with you here at the CS Racing Report with the Pegasus World Cup Invitational Number 4 recap. And really there's one word to describe uh, this fourth edition of the multi-million dollar race from historic Hallandale Oval, that being Gulfstream Park. And it's kind of like what you, uh, the history of the Super Bowl kind of would mirror the history of the Super Bowl blowout. That's what this race was, uh, as Mucho Gusto, uh, as Race Caller so accurately described it, uh, made the race on the far turn a virtual blowout as he won by four and a half lengths in 148.85 for the nine furlongs for trainer Bob Baffert with his assistant Jimmy Barnes on hand to greet Irad Ortiz Jr., who, uh, of course, Rode the horse magnificently in his first uh, on his with his first tri board, the son of Mucho Macho Man. And again, this was a race in which it looked like after he got off to such a great start, the winner, Mucho Gusto, he uh, relinquished the lead to Bodie Express and uh, Mr. Freeze, who end, ended up being eventually the runner up, who set all the early fractions 23.77. 47.78 for the quarter uh, and the first half mile, respectively. And those two horses in tandem set the fractions as Mucho Gusto sat Chile in third uh, with an inside trip, saving the ground. Uh, he rated very kindly the way he did the Robert Lewis and a couple of his other stakes races for those who thought that he was basically a speed burner. Didn't need the lead was able to make his move at a time and a point in a race when higher power looked like he was making better progress uh, than uh, Mucho Gusto. Mouth open, looked like he might be struggling a little bit, and it appeared that he was going to make a bid uh, and threaten the top two. And all of a sudden, Irad basically let out a notch on Mucho Gusto, and he, of course, quickly uh, moved in on the leaders. Uh, and right on the turn, uh, with about a little less than three furlongs out, he basically made the other two uh, seem as though they were in their own private races. He rushed up quickly into contention uh, to overtake the race. And as I said before, you know, really did sort of open the race up once he blew by those two. And War Story uh, made a nice bid along with Diamond Oops uh, to get the, the, the placings behind Mr. Freeze as Mucho Gusto, as I said, won by four and a half. Mr. Freeze, three quarters of a length in front of War Story, who was three quarters of a length in front of Diamond Oops. So those horses uh, had a nice little scrum uh, going on as Mucho Gusto streaked away uh, to capture uh, his first grade one uh, of his career. Uh, and then, of course, there were plenty of disappointments in this race, higher power being chief among them, because it just looked like it looked like when he was stalking and pouncing and making that menacing move that I had said that would be very important going a mile and an eighth. He completely emptied out. And I think that's going to underscore or cause John Sheriff's or excuse me, uh, John Sadler and his connections to reevaluate what the tactics are going to be at a mile and an eighth. But he is really uh, basically at this point. Uh, after being a distant third in the Breeders' Cup Classic at his preferred distance of a mile and a quarter, albeit on a racetrack, even though it was his home turf, a very, very demanding one. Um, and being kind of a non-factor in the race prior to that Breeders' Cup that I thought would set him up for his added, for the added distance of the Breeders' Cup Classic in the awesome again, and then getting his horseshoes just completely just, you know, taken off its foundation in this race. Now, all of a sudden, higher power becomes a price. Uh, and also the question um, will be posed, is he just a California phenomenon that can't take his show on the road? So that's going to be a question mark that he may not have to answer uh, anytime soon, even though he is projected to possibly be an entrant in one of the Middle Eastern uh classics, be it the new Saudi Cup or the Dubai World Cup at that mile and a quarter distance. So um, whether he takes his show or gets another opportunity to prove disprove those who think that maybe he's a California phenomenon, uh, again, it may be a case in point where we find out sooner than later uh, if it is, in fact, there's some traction and some uh, legitimacy to it uh, once he goes back to California, if he doesn't participate uh, in both or one of those races in the Middle East. But we're going to find out certainly at some point. But he did not run very well. He ended up finishing last, as you see, um, the, of course, the full order of finish for this fourth edition of the Pegasus World Cup Invitational. Tenfold, he's a horse that just doesn't belong in this kind of company. He's going to have an opportunity maybe at the fairgrounds and or Oaklawn in some of the stakes there to maybe perhaps prove that he can uh, be a, a legitimate horse, but he was nowhere to be found in here. Bodie Express contended and then just, you know, once Mucho Gusto um, uh, swore you know, swoop by he and Mr. Freeze, he became discouraged and that was the end of him finishing fifth. True Timber really never picked up. And then one of the horses, a horse that I love, but I didn't think in this spot, 
despite running a good number in the Discovery Handicap, finishing second to an up-and-comer who should be one of the major players in the Handicap division in this new calendar year of 2020, I thought that tax really, to me, wasn't the, the one to look for uh, in this race. Got a good post in the number two, but was really never a non-factor. He was in that sort of that second pack and that second tier of horses or that second flight that never really were in any weren't in the area code with the top three or four horses in this race with higher power, as I said before, making that menacing move before he just basically dropped a bit and, and, and gave in on the fight. And so, you know, he finished ninth tax along with higher power finishing dead last. And that calls into question, at least for the ones who disappointed, where they fit in in 2020 in the handicap division. As for the winner, Mucho Gusto, of course, a lot of people have had question marks about him. Certainly, I think even for those who have been staunch supporters like myself, the Oklahoma Derby was a disappointment, but he redeemed himself very well, showed that the layoff had no ill effects on his ability to run the way that he did. Now the question is going to be, will he recuperate well enough to run in what was in his intended target, the Saudi Cup that was supposed to be prepped at Santa Anita with the San Pasquale. He was supposed to stay home and run there uh, as his preparation uh effort uh, or his preparation run before going to Saudi Arabia to, to team up with McKenzie for that $20 million race. Now, of course, after winning this one, he certainly looks like a better candidate. But again, the question will be, how will he come out of this race after putting on a lot of gears uh, after a long layoff uh, in the Pegasus? So that's going to be a question mark. Can he duplicate that kind of performance and be not only a major player, but perhaps a superstar for the Baffert Barn, or as many people call it, the Baffert Brigade? Uh, he was very, very um, sparkling and very impressive in winning the fourth edition of the Pegasus World Cup Invitational, giving Bob Baffert his second win in the four-year history of the race, winning it by four and a half links in 148.85 uh, to basically get his first grade one of his career. Mucho gusto, the winner of the Pegasus World Cup Invitational. And for all you viewers out there, stay tuned for a little tribute for those, for some of those who are no longer with us. Up front, Mr. Freeze has the lead. Pony Express and Jaramillo. Now Mucho Gusto guided to the clear, and he's on the attack now with a quarter of a mile left to go. Diamond Oops is back to fourth, then tenfold, but Mucho Gusto threatening to blow this wide open. Mucho Gusto and Irad Ortiz Jr. less than a quarter of a mile from home, on top by three, by four, and moving away. Back to second is Mr. Freeze. Pony Express and Diamond Oops are next. War story from last for a minor placing, but Bob Baffert is unstoppable as Mucho Mucho Gusto and Irad Ortiz Jr., authoritative winners of the Pegasus World Cup. Mr. Freeze might have held second over War Story. Then it was Diamond Oops in 148 and 4.